Hi, I'm, I'm Koji Kuchishi, uh, CEO and co-founder of Sciofuse Biomedical. First of all, I would like to thank you for giving us such an exciting opportunity to introduce our company. Okay, next please. Uh, we are a Japanese startup. Next please. Oh, can, can we switch this? We are at uh, the first, <laughs> the whole moment. <laughs> Tell us, yes. Uh, the, we are a Japanese startup founded in 2010 based on the technology licensed from Kyushu University. We are currently located in Tokyo University, having 13 full time staff, including PhDs, uh, including five PhDs and two engineers. We are a privately held venture backed company and at the preclinical stage. Next, please. The problems we are trying to solve is the regeneration of the solid 3D tissue. Next, please. Can we use this? Sorry, I don't know how to. Okay, the, the previous slides, please. Okay, uh, the problems we are trying to solve is the regeneration of the solid tissue which uh, the current cell delivery strategy have faced challenges due to the uh, insufficient engraftment of delivered cells on site. And we provide platform technology of fabricating various kinds of tissue, uh, no, sorry, various kinds of uh, cell types into any desired 3D shape, preserving viability and functionality of cells. Next, please. Uh, let me explain our technology platform. In order to, next please. In order to have uh, 3D tissue, we first uh, create a bunch of uh, cell aggregates, which we called spheroids. Next. And uh, from single type or uh, multiple type of cells, which typically contains uh, tens of thousands of cells, next, which forms a diameter of like uh, 0 0.5 millimeter or so per spheroid. And then uh, using these spheroids as building blocks, we literally skewer them one by one on the needles. Then after skewered, cell aggregates stick together and matures after one week or so of a maturation process. Then we simply collect them, removing the needles. This, then as an end product, you can have 3D cell constructs solely from a living cell and ECMs. And this latter process, we have IP, valid in the US. Next slide, please. And for this securing process, we completely automated this process. Like the typical 3D printer, we input 3D data and as raw material, we put uh, spheroids into it. And the system automatically assembles spheroids into uh, the 3D shape according to the data and the skewered spheroids looks like this. And after the maturation process of one week, we will have uh, the tissue looks like this. Next, please. The system is now available in Japan and will be available in the US next year. Let me show you the video, how it works. Yes. Please play. Oh. Yes, push. 
please, please push the button. embedded. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you push? We, we checked the, the, the check encounter. Okay, let's skip. <laughs> let's skip the video. Okay, then uh, uh, I will show you the preliminary, several preliminary examples of the, uh, these applications. Next, please. The first one was uh, MS3 3D constructs for regeneration of the cartilage as an, and subchondral bone. We first used a uh, bone marrow derived MSC, which forms like this, and created defects on the rabbit's knee and implanted them. Then as you see, the cartilage and subchondral bone are regenerated respectively in vivo. At the time of implantation, it, it is not differentiated. However, uh, the, the MSC differentiated in vivo by themselves. And when you look at the histology, next please, the regenerative tissue looks very similar to uh, the host tissue. The typical characteristics of the uh, hyaline cartridge, which is stained in, in uh, brown, has Next, please. Uh, characteristics of the columnar distribution of the chondrocytes, and also uh, which has a uh, tight mark, which is a typical uh, expression of the uh, boundary between the cartilage and subchondral bone. Next, please. And second example is a tubular shape as a replacement for the blood vessel. In this case, we mix three types of cells, fibroblasts, endothelial cells, and smooth muscle cells. And one week after the, uh, the assembly, the histology looks like this. Next, please. Despite the, oh no, despite the thickness of the uh, wall, the cells survived deep inside. And also, uh, when you look at the uh, anterior cells, which is stained in brown, they formed microchannels, which we expect to help uh, to uh, assist angiogenesis when it is implanted. And also, when you look at the, uh, the picture on down right side, um, the rich collagen production is observed, which is stained in blue. Next, please. And the next example is liver. In this case, next please, we mixed hepatocyte and anterior cells and mesenchymal stem cells in one spheroids and assembled them in this, uh, the shape like this, in a tubular shape. Then four days after assembly, the stained anterior cells comes to the surface comes to the surface of the tissue, which means the mixed cell moves freely inside the tissue. And also, next please, when you look at the H is, uh, his, uh, H is staining, uh, the cells deep inside uh, also survived. In this case, we used hepatocyte, but uh, surprisingly, they survived in this uh, depth. Next please. And also, the, the cells patent like, just like the native tissue of the uh, liver. Next, please. Next, please. And also, the alubumin production was observed. So, from these examples, we strongly believe that our bio 3D printer 
is a very effective way of form, not only for forming, not only for giving shape to, to cells, but also preserving functionality and viability of cells in the 3D, 3D tissue. Next, please. When it comes to our business, next, please. We have, uh, we started selling the system in Japan in the meantime for the research purpose. And in the long term, uh, we are under development of the uh, advanced, stage, advanced um, functionality of the Bio3D printer for the clinical purpose. Next, please. And we will also out-license the 3D tissue product. The currently, we are uh, developing various applications uh, jointly with Japanese academias. In the, in the broad range of uh, therapeutic areas. And after the uh, cartilage and blood vessel product, uh, the very uh, exciting uh, the, the application program is following. Like nerve, heart, or pancreas. And last please, next please. And also, uh, in the future, we're going to start the contract manufacturing of 3D tissue. Um, um, yeah. And also, uh, then we are, what we are looking for in the U.S. Uh, at this stage is uh, the marketing partners for the bio 3D printer business in the U.S. And secondly, R&D partners to further expand our applications because our system is uh, you know, very versatile to the various uh, type of tissues. We strongly believe uh, this system can uh, be a very good platform to, uh, for the research of the regenerative medicine. Thank you very much for listening. Typically, it's uh, one week. After, us, after assembly, we all put them on in the bioreactor and let them mature for, for a week or so. So was it critical to uh, make the ability to differentiate the tissues for all, all those trials? And, I see. Uh, when it, comes, it really depends on the applications. Uh, in case of the you know, blood vessel, we use the differentiated cells. We start from the differentiated cells, so there is no need for differentiation. We, what we need is the maturation of the, uh, by the self-organization of the various type of cells. As you see, the rich collagen is produced. And also, the, uh, depending on the maturation period, the functionality or, or strength of the tissue changes over time. I have two questions. Um, your histology of your blood vessels didn't seem to have luminal endothelial cells. Exactly. I was wondering how you were tackling mm -hmm. that. And could you say something about the throughput of the printer? Uh, when it comes to throughput, uh, in, in order to have the you know uh, five millimeter length of the uh, five millimeter length of and uh, uh, two millimeter diameter tube, uh, it takes. Three, three hours or so to assemble the tissue. But before the assembly process, uh, we need an expansion of the cells, number of cells. And the formation of spheroid just take one or two days. Lumina? Uh, we, we just placed spheroid in, in a circular way. Shall we talk later? later? Okay. <coughs> what, what's the composition of the skewers? What material are they fabricated? Skewers are uh, stainless steel. They are Thanks. made of st steel. Yeah. So here we go. What is the regulatory pathway for your device, and then the the um, a slightly different regulatory pathway for its actual use in therapeutic? 
in, in, in the case of Japanese market, uh, the regulatory has just, is just changing, and the new regula regulation is, is implemented in, in, in November. And the uh, sale-based product is, will have the uh, special track for that, the approval process. And uh, uh, the government will introduce a, a conditional approval for the, uh, the sale product like this. And, uh, and as long as the safety is confirmed and the minimum number of the uh, you know, crew for the efficacy is, is uh, evidenced, uh, government will give you uh, the conditional approval. And you need to show the, the enough number of efficacy data afterwards We need FDA approval for the tissue obtained, but we don't need, I, I don't think we need FDA approval for the machine, because the machine is just a manufacturing equipment. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.